The last four weeks, we've been going over a, a series we called Learning to Listen. And it's really just unpacking how we can hear from God. And how many people know that in this day and time, with all of the difficulty and darkness and struggle and lack and need in the world, you need to hear God specifically now more than ever. Are you with me? Do I have a witness? So I really want to encourage you, if you, maybe you've not been here the last four weeks or you missed a couple of weeks, or maybe you have been here each Sunday, go back and, and get a recap online. If you go to soundcloud.com slash mywaterbrook and scroll down to where it says recent messages, you'll see all four messages. And some of these messages, in fact, all four of them are extremely powerful, extremely impactful I'm telling you, we've, we've been getting testimonies of what God is doing now that people are understanding how we can hear from him. Amen? Amen. Amen. Um, so please go back and listen to the messages. Also, last week, Pastor Blessed preached a powerful message, yeah. part four in this series. And he gave a very specific testimony of how, as a church, we heard from God, specific instructions from God that we should do something, that we should put on this conference that we had last year. I know some people were here for that. And he confirmed it through different people. And uh, it wasn't the easiest of things, the easiest of journeys to embark on. But the truth is when you hear from God and you take a step of faith and you take steps of faith, it's the responsibility is on God to confirm that word. The responsibility is on God to make sure that it comes to pass. And Pastor Bless shared a very, very amazing testimony of something that we've experienced as a house. And so today I want to kind of piggyback off of that and launch into part five, really the final chapter in learning to listen, in our series learning to listen. So um, what I'm going to do today is taking a cue from Pastor Bless, I'm going to use three examples or three stories. Two of these stories are taken from the Bible, and one will be taken from my personal life. Amen? Amen. So let me just say a quick word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We give you praise and glory. We give you honor and adoration. We thank you for bringing all of us here on this amazing Sunday morning. I ask, oh God, that you take control over the words of my mouth and that you allow me to speak only what you want your people to hear. In Jesus' name. Lord, let lives be changed. Let miracles come. Let prayers be answered. Lord, just let your word have impact today and forever. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Say hi to your neighbor. Say happy Valentine's Sunday. Valentine Sunday. Say don't worry. If you didn't have a Valentine, Waterbrook is here for you. Say happy Valentine's Sunday. Valentine Sunday. Amen. So if we have our Bibles or if you have a Bible app on your phone, if we can put it on the screen, can we start in Mark chapter 4, verse 23 to 25? I know some people were a little confused when they came in this morning and they saw the setup. You know, they thought it was a, just a turn up. It is a turn up. It's a Holy Ghost turn up, but it's still a service. All right? So, so we're going to go through a little bit of the word. And like I said, I'm going to make two points. So here we go. Mark 4, 23 to 25. Jesus said, take heed what you hear. With the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. And to you who hear, more will be given. For whoever has, to him more will be given. But to whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away. Amen. So here's the point. You know, like, like I said, we've been going through this week after week. And, and what we've learned is that God is always speaking. The challenge is, are we understanding how to listen? Are we understanding how to hear him? Are we tuning in? Are we paying attention when he's speaking? Are we obeying and taking steps of faith? Or are we ignoring that and it's coming in through one ear and out the other? Are we trusting in our plans over his purpose? Are we trusting in our ways over his will? Amen? Amen. How many times in scripture does Jesus say, he who has ears, let him hear? Seven times in the book of Revelation. In Isaiah, seven times God said, listen to me. So the point is God is speaking, but are we listening? Romans chapter 10 verse 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing, what's up Brooke? The rules are still the same. If you don't engage me, I know some people are waiting for the food. You will not see that food today. I need to hear you. Faith comes by hearing. God bless you. The rules are the same. Come on, Waterbrook. So the, the truth is, the way to have 
the kind of faith that will get anything done in your life is to hear a word from God. And the way to hear a word from God is to spend time with God and allow God to speak to you and you listen to him and then you respond in faith and in obedience. So like I said, I have three stories to share. Um, the first one is taken from the book of Jonah chapter 1 verse 1 to 4. And here's the first point that I'm going to make today and I want you to write these points down. There's only two points that I want you to remember today. And the three stories I will use will illustrate these two points. The first point is that we must hear with obedience. Everybody say hear with obedience. Hear with obedience. Tell your neighbor say hear with obedience. Hear with obedience. Here we go. Jonah chapter 1 verse 1. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah the son of Amittai saying Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent out a great wind on the sea. And there was a mighty tempest on the sea, so that the ship was about to be broken up. Okay, so a little recap. Jonah was a prophet. And, uh, you know, God, as we just read, God spoke to him and said, Hey, I have this message I need you to deliver. Go to this city and speak to the people and tell them what I said. But of course, Jonah didn't want to do that. So what he did was he went in the opposite direction. And instead of going to where God sent him to, he went to another city in the exact opposite direction. And what happens next? He's in a ship and storms arise. And, you know, it looks like the ship is about to be broken in two. And if you read this uh, chapter later on, you'll find that eventually the, the people on the ship, they deduced, Jonah in fact confessed that all of this was going wrong because he was there, because he didn't do what God told him to do. So the people in the ship threw him out of the ship into the water and then he was swallowed by a fish that God specifically prepared for that purpose. Now this is what happened. God spoke through his voice to Jonah and Jonah didn't listen. So the next thing, God spoke through circumstances. Now how many times in our lives do we feel like maybe we're not really hearing God clearly and we feel like we're surrounded by storms and difficulty? Could it be that your next breakthrough or the breakthrough that you're believing God for is tied to your last obedience. And that's the point. When God says something to you, we read it in Mark 4. If Jesus said, take heed what you hear and the measure that you use what you hear, more will be given to you. But if you don't take heed, if you don't do what I tell you, then I'm not going to speak to you anymore. And so sometimes we need to take a deeper look at circumstances in our lives. And if it feels like everything is going wrong, go back to the instructions God has given you. Go back to the things that God has said in his word, the way that you're supposed to live, the things you're supposed to do. And, and be honest with yourself. You can lie to everybody in this world, but you can't lie to yourself. And you can't lie to God. Amen? Amen. So you be honest with yourself and say, have I been living in obedience? Have I done what God asked me to do? And if not, then all you have to do is do what Jonah said. And just go back and say, Lord, forgive me. Because he's a loving father. Amen? Amen. Your next breakthrough, that's the point. Hear with obedience because your next breakthrough is tied to your last obedience. The second point today is we have to hear. So the first point is what? Hear with? Obedience. Hear with? Obedience. Okay. The second point, hear with humility. Amen? Amen. Let's go to Genesis chapter 37 verse 5 to 10 Genesis 37 5 to 10 are we there are we there what's a book okay can we put it on the screen now Joseph had a dream and he told it to his brothers and they hated him even more so he said to them please hear this dream which I have dreamed there we were, binding sheaves in the field. Then behold, my sheaf arose and also stood upright. And indeed, your sheaves stood all around and bowed down to my sheaf. And his brother said to him, Shall you indeed reign over us? Or shall you indeed have dominion over us? So they hated him even more for his dreams and for his words. 
And then he dreamed still another dream and told it to his brothers and said, look, I have dreamed another dream. And this time the sun, the moon and the 11 stars bowed down to me. So he told it to his father and his brothers and his father rebuked him and said to him, what is this dream that you have dreamed? Shall your mother and I and your brothers indeed come to bow down to earth before you? And his brothers envied him, but his father kept the matter in mind. We all know this story, right? It's something that we're pretty familiar. If you spend time in church, you've heard this story before. And I think it's safe to say that we are all in agreement that the dreams Joseph had about his destiny were from God. But was his reaction from God? You see, Joseph had a dream that God said, I'm going to make you the ruler. And everybody, including your family, will bow down before you. And what's the first thing Joseph did? High shoulder. He said, ah, Pastor Bless, God told me, you know, everybody here is going to bow down. So, the point is, did Joseph react with pride about what God had revealed to him? Amen? Are you catching me? Now we know that God is all powerful and we know that the scripture says all things work together for our good because we love God and we're called according to his purpose. So even when we make mistakes or we don't react or we don't do things the way that we should, God will still, because we love him and we're called according to his purpose, God will still make everything work out in your favor. But look what happened. Probably because of pride or maybe because it just wasn't wise. Joseph, from dreaming those dreams, gets put in a pit, then he gets sent to prison, then he gets accused falsely of rape, he goes through difficulty after difficulty after difficulty, all because he had a little bit of pride about what God told him. Now here's the point, God does not speak to prove your point, God speaks to perfect his purpose. God doesn't speak to make you feel better or to make you look better than everyone around you. He speaks to prepare and perfect you for his purpose. Do you know the interesting thing? One of Joseph's gifts was the interpretation of dreams. Do you know that after those first two dreams, God never spoke to him in a dream ever again? Wow. Think about that. He had two dreams with a word from God. And after those two dreams and the way that he handled it, God never, in the Bible, check it, there is no record of God ever, for as long as he lived, ever speaking to Joseph again in another dream. But the gifts of God are without repentance. So the gift to interpret dreams was still in him. So check what happens. The next time Joseph has access to a dream, it's in humility. Now what does he do? He uses the gift of God to interpret somebody else's dream. He uses the gift of God for the betterment of people around him. And he puts himself to work. So he interprets the baker's dream. Then that leads him to interpreting Pharaoh's dream. And that eventually leads him to the destiny that God gave him in the first place. Ladies and gentlemen, it is very important that we don't use the word of God to make ourselves look better. You should not use the... uh, we, We went over this a few weeks ago. Thou shalt not use the name of the Lord in vain. Thus saith the Lord is not for you to look better than people are around you. Are you with me? God doesn't speak to prove our point. He speaks to prepare and perfect us for his purpose. Amen? Amen. Let's go to James 4.6. James 4.6. Therefore he says, God resists the proud and he gives grace to the humble. The word resist from the original Greek origin means opposes. So do you know what that means? It means that if we are proud, if we are prideful, is that the word? Prideful. My wife always corrects my English. If we are proud or we are prideful, do you know what that does? It puts you in direct opposition with God. It's like saying you are playing a sport and God is playing for the opposite team. So that's what pride does because God doesn't deal with pride. It says God resists the proud but it gives grace to the humble. So as you are hearing from God, check your pride at the door. Humble yourself. Receive the word of God with meekness, with humility. Make yourself a teachable spirit and watch what God will do in your life. Let's quickly go to 
Luke chapter 8. We've got a lot to get through today, so I'm not going to read the whole chapter, but please write these scriptures down and go back and study them during the week. And, and God will, by God's grace, he will expand on his word in your heart. Amen? Amen. So in Luke chapter 8, um, this is where Jesus talks about the parable of the sower. And we know what the seed is. The seed is the word of God, right? So Jesus describes different scenarios where a sower goes out with the seed, which is the word of God, and he spreads it. And then the seed falls on different soil. And some falls on rocky ground. Some, you know, the birds of the air take it. And he describes all of these scenarios. So let's go to verse 15. Okay. But the ones that fell on good ground are those who, having heard the word with a noble and good heart, keep it and bear fruit with patience. That is the exact attitude that we need to have when God is speaking to us. A noble and a good heart, a humble heart. You have to humble yourself. You have to be meek. You have to be teachable. You have to realize that God is not speaking to you or giving you a word or a promise to make you look better than everyone else. He's doing that because he has a purpose for you. And so you submit to that. Amen? Let's go to verse 18. Verse 18. Therefore, this is Jesus talking. Therefore, take heed how you hear. For whoever has, to him more will be given. And whoever does not have, even what he seems to have will be taken away from him. That's the point. What are you doing with what you're hearing? Because we know by now that God is always speaking. So what are we doing with the things that God has told us? Are we using it to build our pride? Are we using it to prove our point? Are we boastful about it? Or are we humble? Are we receiving the word of God with humility? And then secondly, and as importantly, are we hearing with obedience? Just like Jonah. Are we in difficult circumstances because God has been speaking to us, but we're not paying attention? And then we wonder why things in our lives are not working out. And we wonder why we're in storms and in trials and tribulations. It's because we're not obedient to the word of God. Amen? So I told you I'm going to use uh, three examples. The first was Jonah. The second was Joseph. Yeah? And what are the two points? You know, I always have to check. Number one, here with obedience. Number two, here with humility. Here with humility. Okay. Now, for the third example, I'm going to use my own personal story. And as today is Valentine's Day, I think for the first time, I'm going to share a little bit of the behind the scenes of me and Mrs. W. So, um... Please give her this way, Mike, so that if I say anything that's not right, you can just correct me. All right. So here we go. How much time do I have? Okay. Um, so I had always, you know, I, I, when I was speaking a little earlier, I said, you know, sometimes we trust in our plans over God's purpose, right? And I had always, I was always like a big picture thinker. So I was always thinking years down the road. I always had specific plans of how I was going to live my life and what's going to happen when. And you know we all do it, right? Oh, by this age, I'm going to graduate. Then I'm going to get a job. Then I'm going to marry at this age. Then I'm going to have children at this age. And then I'm, you know. And in my mind, I said, by the time I'm 30, I'm going to marry. So I was going to use my 20s to live like a vagabond. God forgive me. Anyway, you are forgiving me. <laughs> So I was going to use my 20s to do anyhow. And then when I was about 28, 29, I would find the person that I wanted to settle down with. And at 30, I would marry. I would use two years to enjoy with my wife. Then I'll have children and then we keep it moving. But God had other plans. Um, anyway, so um, I realized, you know, I was 30, I was 31, I was 32, you know, and I was still just living really crazy, really reckless and... Uh, so I started thinking, okay, you know, you know, this is not the plan. I said I was going to do this by 30, and now I'm 32, 33. It's time to, you know, to fix up. And uh, so at the time, I, you know, I found somebody that I really got along with very well. We worked well together. You know, we'd had like a casual relationship for a while. And I said, okay, this is the person. This is, I'm going to just make this work, you know. And uh, so I was, you know, I was taking steps. And, I, you know, for the first time, I actually took this person and introduce them to my family, introduce them to my parents, like, oh, this is the person I'm dating, and, you know, and so on and so forth. And uh, 
I just for, for a few months I just didn't really have peace and you know we spoke during this series that God confirms his word through his word through his wisdom and through his peace now the first thing was I just didn't have peace and then over the course of a few months I had three dreams specifically about this situation and God told me in no unclear terms that if I went ahead with my plan that not only would it bring disaster on myself even the person that I was dragging with me it wasn't going to work out for them and uh, you know after I had the third dream I knew very clearly what God was saying to me so I said okay you know let me go to a spiritual leader and say hey this is what I think God is saying and I went to this spiritual leader who I trust and I said, you know, I had these dreams and this is what God is saying. Do you know what the spiritual leader said to me? They said, actually, God told me months ago that this is not the person for you. But I know you are stubborn. So I went to God and said, please, you know your son. Go and tell him yourself. Because if I go and tell Banky this, he will marry the girl next week. Just to prove a point that nobody can tell him what to do. So at this point, I knew what God was saying. So I, you know, I, I kind of ended that relationship. And, uh, you know, for the next year or two, I was just focusing on work, focusing on trying to be a better person, focusing on just trying to develop and fix my life. And I started going to church very regularly. I started going to TPA. Shout out to people that are here from the Dome. And, uh, you know, so I'm hearing PT preach and it's building my faith. And, you know, I'm just trying to be a better person, a better child of God. And I had directed a TV commercial for a company and they were doing a launch event at Oriental Hotel and I was doing an interview on the red carpet and I just you know I'm, I'm talking into the camera like this and then I just saw the most beautiful sight I'd ever seen in my life just walking by me you know when you're talking and you're just like you know you know men men I mean the men in the house you know what I'm saying you know when you see the walk of God so I uh Here's the interesting thing. In my mind, that was the first time that I had ever seen Adesua. But the truth of, it, of the matter is, I had actually crossed paths with her every year for the last three or four years, and I didn't even recognize. You know, sometimes you are praying for something, but God won't give you the answer because you are not ready to handle it. So I had actually crossed paths. She had even interviewed me on camera, and I didn't even, it didn't even, nothing. But this very day, you know, that's why you need to stay in a place of faith. Go to church. Listen to the word of God. Eh? So this day I'm talking and she, come to the water brook. If you don't have anywhere to go, we'll take you here. So she walks by me and I see her and I said, oh, wow, who is this? You know, and then I saw the person that was uh, working with her. And this why is giving me the eye. Am I Okay. Okay. So I saw the person that was working with her who I had known from times past. And I said, hey, is your ma, who, who's this, you know, who's this beautiful specimen, you know? And Ishima said, oh, you know, her name is Adesua. I told me she moved back from Jan. She's an actor. So I got her name. And as a, you know, as a sharp guy, I went straight to Google. First Googled her. Read every interview. Read all the things. Okay, who is she? What's she about? Now, I had never seen her act in a movie. I'd never seen any of her films at the time. But I could tell from my interviews just the kind of person that she was. She was, not only was she beautiful, she was intelligent, she was smart, she was grounded, she was balanced. I mean, look at the work of God. And um, so I knew that I was interested. In fact, I actually called my best friend, Tunde, and I said, hey, I found my next girlfriend. You know, as a man of faith, you have to speak things into existence. So, um, so the next thing I did was I went to her Instagram and I just started scrolling. And I was, you know, when you're doing the Instagram research, don't act like I'm the only one that has ever done this. So I'm scrolling, you know, back, you know, back. You know, you, you can't even check the ones now after they have packaged themselves. You have to go back to the beginning. So I scrolled all the way back. And I saw a post where she was sitting with like three friends. And they were sitting on the floor singing worship songs. And it was so refreshing to me to find somebody in entertainment who was proud of their faith. I'm proud of their relationship with God that they're just sitting here singing and praising God right there on their Instagram. I said, ah. I said, okay, you know, maybe we have something here. So I slid into her DM, you know, as we do. And uh, this morning when I was preparing, I actually 
scrolled back like how many years now of DMs? Yes. And I found the DM that I sent and I said, hi. So we haven't officially been introduced, but I saw you at the launch the other day and I've decided that I'm going to be your biggest fan. I'm Banky. Can we please be friends? Appreciate me. When you shoot your shot, you have to do it with strategy. And then Adesua said this, LOL, hi Banky, I'm Adesua. This is both sweet and funny. It has always been a dream of mine to have a superstar as my biggest fan. <laughs> LOL, friends, why not? I can do friendship. Gentlemen in the audience, take wisdom from what I'm saying. <laughs> he who has ears to hear, God bless you. Now I didn't know this at the time, but she was kind of coming out of a relationship. You know when you're in that place where you are single, but you're in a relationship, but you are single, but you're in a relationship, and you, today you are broken up, tomorrow you are fighting, you know? She was in this gray area space. And one thing, if you know Adesua, you know that she loves hard. So if Adesua loves you, you can kiss somebody, she will still love you. Like, that's just the way she is. And I found out, out, and that's one of my favorite things about her, this way, as beautiful as she is in the face, her heart is even more beautiful than that. So I, I deduced, as we started talking, that she was still kind of one leg in, one leg out, trying to figure out what was happening with this relationship. But you know my approach, I said, can we be friends? I didn't say that you want, just friends, friend zone. I willingly put myself in the friend zone. But the interesting thing is that, you know when God starts to work, right? So... We became friends, and then we quickly became the best of friends. We would talk every day for hours, like just talking. Now, we're not dating. Now, because we were both semi-public faces, we can't even go out to a lot of places together so that, you know, the Insta blogs and Linda Cages of the world don't pieces your matter before you have even found, figured it out. So we couldn't even go out that much. So we would just spend every day talking, and we became close and tight and closer and tighter and we would just we just I got to know her she got to know me we would talk about our lives our dreams our families our backgrounds she quickly became the most important person that I needed to speak to like I needed to speak to her like I needed air every day if I didn't speak to her that day it wasn't right and I can actually confidently tell you that from that first day that she gave me her number in that DM till now I've spoken to her every single day since that time now, this is happening. So we're, you know, we're becoming closer and tighter. And I'm like, ah, how far with this old relationship? This is not, the destiny is standing in front of you. You are still saying that you are trying to turn a corner. Yeah, anyway. Um, so I, I remember the, the first time I broached the conversation and I said, you know, we're so close, we're so tight, you know, why don't we just, you know, make this thing official? And she said, oh, you know, I'm not quite ready and I'm still going through some things. And I said, okay, 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 no problem. Friend zone is okay. Friend zone, no show you. I'm fine. Don't worry. Well, okay, I'll be here for you. And so we continued getting this process. And, we, and, and I actually honestly think, well, I'll come back to that. So we're becoming closer and tighter and closer and tighter, right? And then in January 2016, I needed to shoot a video for a little song called Made For You. Anybody remember that song? Okay, so the interesting thing about that song is I actually wrote the song about a minute and a half into it, and then I couldn't finish the song prior to meeting this young woman because the song, I knew the song was very deep. So I had written the chorus and a little bit of the first verse, but then I just stopped that. You know, the rest of the words will come to me, but it was while I was now becoming closer and tighter with this lady that the rest of the words of the song just started coming. So I knew when it was time to shoot the video that it has to be with this person that inspired the song, right? So I said, so I called her manager and I, I booked her officially to appear in my video shoot, as in I paid booking fee, fly from uh, Lagos to New York City, like full on official booking that you will not say that because you are my friend, I'm trying to take advantage of you. So I flew her into New York and we shot the Made For You video. And again, as a man of faith, Anybody that remembers that video knows that in that video, the couple got engaged, yeah? So, she has not even agreed to date me. I'm already speaking it through my video that we're going to get engaged. 
And you know, the greatest thing about, I'm going to have a moment of flesh here. The greatest thing about being the director of your own video is that when it's the kissing scene, you're the one that will say when to cut. <laughs> so they say, record, I say, to the point, I say, Banky, it's okay now. Nah. I said, but I shot, I shot the Made For You video with her in New York. And I, and I planned to speak to her at the end of the video shoot, but she was so tired. And I was like, let me let her rest. Because she literally had just arrived, I think that morning or the night before. So I said, I'll approach this relationship conversation later. So I remember I was driving a rental car from New York back to DC. And I was speaking with her on the phone because she was waiting for her flight. And I said, that's how far now? You know, well, now you can see that we work well together. We're friends. You talk to me every day. That was up? So she goes, ask me again. That I should ask her again. You, you can't tell a, a romantic man like me something like that. I should ask you again. I say, oh, okay, don't worry. I'm coming. Ladies and gentlemen, her birthday is February 22nd, next Saturday, actually. So I said, and I knew that in conversations with her, I knew that she'd always wanted to go to Zanzibar, Tanzania, or Tanzania. Is that the right way? Thank you. Uh, so I said, okay, I'm going to plan this trip, and I'm going to take her to Zanzibar, and I'm going to, you know, ask her in the most romantic way to be my girlfriend. So I called everybody around her. I told her manager, her sisters, that please, they should not book her for anything. They should keep her free. Tega is here. I'm sure Tega knows a lot of these uh, details. Uh, anyway, so, so after arranging this ro romantic, elaborate trip to Tanzania, Adesua gets booked for a movie shoot with the ex-boyfriend that I'm trying to steal her from. I'm telling you the truth. Let me I'm not lying to you. So, this is time to fast and pray. You understand? So, you know, so she's on set. And I just realized that on a day-to-day -day basis, something is not right in the atmosphere, you know? Things are, it's not, it's, something is wrong, you know? But I'm like, I just need to hold on till we get to Tanzania. Just hold on till we get to Tanzania. No problem, no problem. We'll get there, we'll get there. Finally, when the, 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 a few days to the trip, I now tell her that, hey, for your birthday, you know, I want to take you to Zanzibar. And you should have seen the sheer panic that took over her face. Because now she was, you know, she was really confused. She was struggling. She didn't want to go. She was nervous. This, and I don't spend money. You, you know how it is. And I don't, she said, ah, my mom is coming into town. I can't go. With my mother. I said, give me your mother's number. I will ask your mother myself. Don't worry. Um, and I think it's important to say this, you know, we had, in our conversations, we had decided that we were going to do things the God way, right? So, so when I spoke to her mom, I said, Ma, I'm not taking your daughter to Tanzania to have sex with her. I'm taking your daughter to Tanzania because I really care about her and I really want to be with her and I just want to get away you know, in a very respectful way so that the mom too will know that I'm not just, you know, a useless guy. Even though I have been a useless guy at certain times in my life. But God had changed that. Amen. Um, so her mom said, hey, well, what if she's not ready for this relationship? What if she's not there yet? Because her mom obviously had been speaking to her. And I said, you know, in life, eh, I can live with trying and failing, but I can't live with not trying. And as a man, all you can do is see a goal, set a goal, and just try to reach it. And if you don't reach it, no problem. You take it on the chin and keep it moving. But at least you know that you gave it everything that you had. And I think her mom just respected the African man in me. So she said, no problem. <laughs> so she said, no problem. You guys can go. So I called her. I said, we're going to Tanzania. She said, okay. So now we get to Tanzania. The first day was a little rough with travel arrangements. You know how it is. So the second day was a bit better. We're in this nice villa that's overlooking the ocean. I had planned this breakfast on the sea with a small cabana and all of these things. Come on, as a bad man. So as a good man. You know, you know what bad man means. <laughs> bad man in a good way. You know, come on, guys. So, so we're sitting there and I had my little speech. I'm nervous and I said, you know, Susu, you know how I feel about you and... I just, you know, I, I feel like it's time for us to make this thing official. We've been talking now for, I think it was like six, nine months or something. And I said, you know, will you, will you please do me the honor of being my girlfriend? And Adeswa said, I'm still not ready. Hey. See, eh, you people don't, it's men that will understand what I'm saying. 
Gentlemen, you have spent money. Hard and listen. Pastor Bless, you have Zanzibar. Two flights plus travel by road. Cabana on the sea. And they say they are still not ready. This is somebody that you have been, that said, ask me again. No, let me just remind you. That thing hit me like a ton of bricks. I said, I was coming. You know, you know when you are, your head is, it's like, you know that uh, meme where smoke is coming out from your head. I'm sitting there on the seat. That, what? He, ah. First thing, eh, let me just, I'm going to tell you the truth. I, I said, okay, no problem. Thank you so much. We finished it. Great fun. <laughs> I took a three and a half hour walk. I literally walked, there were three resorts joined. I walked the length and breadth of them, drinking alcohol every step of the way. You know when you're just listening to depressing romance, that's depressing songs, just writing terrible lyrics, just, I was, I was really, like I was completely heartbroken. Um, anyway, so Zanzibar comes to, you know, the trip comes to an end. It was very awkward, it was difficult for both of us because we still had one more day. Um, but we get back, and at this point, I just felt like, you know what, I've asked this girl two times. She doesn't want to do that. Maybe this is karma for all the girls' hearts that me have broken. So maybe this is God's way of punishing me in return, that let me cuckoo accept my punishment. But what I knew was that I couldn't, at the time, I just felt like I couldn't handle being her friend anymore. I couldn't have this day-to-day, you are my best friend conversation. Like, hey, if you don't want to date me, cuckoo let me go back and find who wants to date me. So I, you know, I had a conversation with her when we got back to Lagos, and I said, hey, you know, I, I can't really do this best friend, close friend thing anymore. I've, you know, I've tried twice, and you're not ready, and I understand that, and I respect it, but for my own sanity and for my own sake, I, you know, I need to cut this off. So I, so I did, and, and you know, I said we were going to stop talking, and that was it. But you know, that's why it's good to have a relationship with God. So you know, I'm, I'm now just going back out, looking for who to take out, just, you know, and God just kept working on my heart. And he said, listen, all of your life, you've been searching for the kind of connection that you found with this girl. So don't throw it all away because she's just not ready. She's just not ready. Just don't lose a friend over the fact that you can't have the relationship that you want. So I called her back and I said, no, oh, actually, no. Let me, let me give you credits where credits is due. So my birthday came up. And obviously, she was going through a lot because she felt like she had lost her best friend. So she did this. It was my 35th birthday. So she did this. Meanwhile, we'd not been speaking for a couple of weeks. She did this really sweet thing. She did like 35 things that I love about you. She got me a few different cakes. She said she couldn't afford to buy me a car, so she bought me a little uh, model Ferrari sports car. Just things that would not be making you do any. I said, what do you want from me, this woman? You don't, you know. So... But then, and then God started working on my heart, and that's really what inspired it. So I said, so I called her back. I said, you know what? We cuckoo said we're going to be friends. Let's just be friends again. Now, this second round of friendship, I didn't think that we could be closer than we were before, but we were even closer this time around. And it was, it was the most difficult thing for me because by now, I knew for sure, for certain, that this one was my destiny. I knew it. You know when, you know when people tell you that when you find the one, you'll know. This was that moment for me. I knew. I felt like God had told me. I had a peace about being with her. I just, I just knew that she was the one for me. But she couldn't really see it. And I, and I remember one day I knelt down and I prayed. And I said, God, you know how much I love this woman. You know how much I want to be with her. I said, she can't see it. So as you have told me, tell her yourself. And that's why I tell single people, don't go and tell somebody, God said, you should be my wife. Or God said, you should be my husband. If anybody comes and tells you that, say, thank you. Let me go. We're all children of God. So if God spoke to you, then he can speak to your wife. So I told God, I said, for this thing to work, I said, first of all, I am never going to ask Adesua to date me again. Never. I'm her friend though. But you see this, will you be be my lover? I'm never going to ask you. I told God, I said, you have to, if you want us to be together, go and tell her. So I left it at that. Now we're tight. We're close. We're speaking every day. In fact, in hindsight, these were the best times because we spent so much time 
building a real friendship. And it's important that the person that you end up with is your best friend. It should be the person that you can tell anything. It should be the first person that you want to talk to about anything that's going on. So we're getting close, and I said, Lord, I'm not going to tell her nothing. I said, we're just going to be in this friend zone. Then, they, uh, I got a call one day, shout out to Kemi Adetiba, and she said, hey, what Mo Abudu is doing this uh, film called The Wedding Party. I want to send you the script. Do you want to come and audition? And I said, yeah, you know, because Kemi and I had been talking about going into movies all of our years and music videos. So I said, okay, I'll go and audition. So she, you know, she gave me the script and I started preparing for my audition. And I get there and there were a lot of actors, a lot of people who obviously had a lot more experience than me. Um, but I auditioned and they, you know, they gave me a callback. They said, oh, we want you to come for a second callback. I now found out that they had also called her to audition. So we're both auditioning and we go through the, the rounds of auditions and then they now start pairing you. So they'll take you and pair you with three ladies, take each lady, pair them with three guys just to see who had the best chemistry. Now, of course, you want to talk about chemistry. I've been talking to this person for like a year, every single day. So the chemistry was, hello, ladies and gentlemen, it was off the charts. So they, you know, they go through all the audition process and they say, ah, you know, everybody is really good, but there's something here, there's something here. They now called me, they said, oh, who did you feel? I said, well, you know, everybody was good, but I felt like there was something special with uh, this one. They said, yes, everybody in the room was even saying that maybe you guys should even be dating or something. There was just something, you know, you have to put things in the atmosphere. So, um, so they gave both of us the roles. Now, the way God will have it, we are now on the same movie set for like a month, staying in the same hotel. They said, oh, so sorry, you can't come from home if you don't want to stay there. I said, don't worry, I will stay in the hotel. It's okay. They said, oh, you can bring your tie. I said, you are not understanding me. I'm okay. Leave me in the hotel. So while on the set of Wedding Party, we got even closer. The bond was even stronger. But remember, I had told God that I'm not going to ask again. And so I just remained there. And then uh, shortly, maybe a, a couple months after we wrapped, um, one day, as is customary by now, we talk every day for hours. And one day, we're on the phone, and she says, Banky, you know you're my husband, right? I said, sweetheart, I've known this for the longest time. I've just been waiting for you to catch up. I think that deserves another round of applause. That's the moment. That's the moment. So we said, okay, now, now, now pay attention to this. So we said, okay, fine. We now both know that we feel like we're each other's destinies. But remember what I said before. Sometimes we, tr we, we try to trust in our plans over God's purpose. And we'd both been through so many bad relationships and bad situations before that we said, you know, when we're dating single people, you know, sometimes you see somebody, you like them, you start dating. Then you now ask later that, ah, God, is this the right person for me? Sometimes we even go as far as getting married before we start seeking God's face in our relationship. But God is interested even in your relationship. So we said, you know what? We've done this the wrong way for so long. Let's try and do it a different way now. So we said, instead of, we, we both know we want to date, but instead of going into that immediately, let's seek God's face first. So we started praying about our relationship. So I would pray with her. I would pray by myself. She would pray by herself. She would pray with her mom and her pastor. I would pray with my mom and my pastor. We were just praying that God should confirm and by God's grace, that confirmation came. Come on, give me a hallelujah. And, uh, and then we, you know, we, we decided that, uh, that yes, we were going to go into this relationship thing. Now, the interesting thing is, by now, we had spent so much time building such an incredible bond and such a strong friendship that it was like we'd spent, it was a blessing in disguise that she had told me no those few times because number one it taught me humility because if I had just gotten it just like that I, maybe I wouldn't have appreciated it do you understand it taught me to humble myself it taught me to chase it taught me to desire it, it built my faith in God it built my relationship in God it did it forced me to the place where I couldn't 
do it on my own. And I had to go and tell God that, okay, I want it, but I don't know how to do it. Please help me. And that's what this is all about. Now, we're now at the stage where we're talking about learning to listen. And I can tell you confidently that I heard God as regards this relationship. I'm not saying that we are perfect. As she told you before, and as I told you, we've both struggled, we've both had, we've both been works in progress. There are things that God has to work. When we did our first marriage counseling, Pastor Nkoyo, eh? um, Mrs. Nkoyo, the first thing, the first day of marriage counseling, premarital counseling, she goes, oh, what do you want in a wife? And I said, ah, you know, I want her to be like this and that and, you know, God-fearing and to be, you know. And she said, okay, what do you want in a husband? I said, oh, I want this and that. And then she said, okay, here's the thing. Neither of you, throw that out the door because neither of you are what you described. And marriage is the process of submitting to God. And nobody is perfect, but you can be perfect for each other if you involve God in the conversation. If you make him a part of that relationship and allow him to work on both of you, and then it's a step-by-step -step process. It's a journey. Till today, he's still working on me. Till today, he's still working on her. Till today, he's still working on our relationship. But here's the thing. We heard God. We listened to God. We heard with humility. We heard with obedience. And that's the point of today's message. Hear with humility and hear with obedience.